Okay, now let's put this all together. We're going to um, talk about a function here. We're going to talk about its intervals of increasing um, and decreasing. We're going to talk about its maximum and its minima. We're going to draw the, the picture. We're going to do a whole bunch of stuff with it. So it says, okay, use a graphing utility to graph each function over the indicated interval. So that's important that we know what that means to begin with. Here they've given us our function that will be x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5. And they want us to graph it over this indicated interval. What that's telling us is, since that's an interval, those are x values. So this is all they want to see. They want to see this graph starting with an x of negative 1 and ending with an x of 3. Well, we can go ahead and we can put that into our calculator and see what that thing looks like. So in my calculator screen, I'm going to graph x to the third power minus 3x squared plus 5. And instead of just doing a nice zoom 6, I'm going to hit window this time, and I'm going to change my x's from negative 1 to 3. Remember, that was the indicated interval. And then we're going to hit graph. So this is what that will look like. Now in order to get a nice picture of it on my calculate on my paper, we probably need to get our endpoints that we're starting with first. Now we could either plug in a negative 1 into our equation, which would be fine, or we can let our calculator do it. If you hit trace, you can type in any x value you want to and it will go there. So if I type in negative 1, you see how this changed in the bottom left-hand corner? When I hit enter, it'll tell me that that point is the point negative 1, comma 1. Over on the other side, we can go to, since we're still in trace mode, we can just type in 3. Oops, didn't mean to do 33, just 3. And you see how this changed to a 3? And now when I hit enter, it's going to go to the point 3, comma 5. So back on my um, paper here where I'm drawing this out, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plot the point negative 1, 1, which is right there. And then we're going to plot the point 3, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be right about here somewhere. So we know this is where the graph is going to start and stop. But we need to know what's going on in between there. Okay, back on my calculator screen, I could see that we have a maximum point here and we have a minimum point here. In order to find those two places, let's find our maximum first. We're going to do second and then the trace key. You'll notice it opens up a new menu and number four is our maximum. So I'm going to choose number four. Now let the calculator tell you what to do. Here it says left bound. So what that means is we want to be well over here on the left hand side of where we think that maximum is. And whenever I say well on that side, I mean it. We want to be way over. So I'm going to use my cursor, my left um, arrow key, and I'm going to just keep arrowing over until I'm on the left hand side of where that um, maximum point is. So we have to keep going. So we want to be well on that side. And a little further, a little further. That sounds good right there. And now I'm going to hit enter. Notice it put this little triangle up here in the corner. That's important. Now it's asking me for the right bound. So now I want to move to the right until I am well on the right hand side of where that maximum point is. So that's probably good. And I'm going to hit enter. Now again, notice that I, it put a triangle. What it's doing is it's telling the calculator to look between these two places and find the highest point between those. That's why if you don't go out far enough, it won't give you the true maximum. Now for guess, we just hit enter and let the calculator do the guessing. 5.5571 e negative 7, that means times 10 to the negative 7th. This is virtually 0. So right now we know we have a maximum at 0, 0,5 and we can plot that on our paper.